Hey guys, uh, I want to show how I manage the humidor compost system and explain how the toilet and the bin rotation system work. Here I'm, I've turned the compost pile and now I'm raking out the bottom of this bed. I left a little compost in from the previous pile to help kickstart the decomposition process. So here I just have some wood slats and I have rails just fastened into the sides of the bins that these slide into, which helps to hold the compost, keep it from spilling out so I can get more in the same area. I'm going to start with putting down a layer of wood shavings, um, 12 inches deep more or less. This acts as an absorbent sponge, which helps to contain any liquid runoff from the pile uh, and this will decompose just like the rest of the pile as well and so basically how this works is you have four bins and one bin is for holding your dry cover material and the other three work in a three-year rotation and so what you do is you start with your first bin you put down your sponge as i'm doing now and then you make additions to that pile for one year. After one year, uh, I turn the pile and then I cap it off with cover material as I'll show in a little bit. And then you start a new pile. That pile also runs for one year. You fill it up. Uh, at the end of that second year, you cap that one off after it's been turned and then you start your third pile. And so by the time the third pile has filled up after another year, you now have three full bins of compost and your first bin that you started with three years previously has now been aging untouched for two years. And the reason for this is that even though this is a hot compost process and I've, I've seen temperatures in my pile hit well over 150 degrees, um, the two year aging period is necessary to ensure that any pathogens that may have been in the pile in your own waste, um, bacteria, viruses, uh, parasites, anything like that, if they don't have a host for at least that two year period, uh, then they're, they die off and there's no danger of reinfection or anything like that. And the whole idea here is not to create a new disease vector. And now we'll just cap off the finished compost with a layer of sawdust. Uh, it'll help to retain the moisture and uh, keep birds and stuff from digging through it as well. So it takes three years until your first batch of finished compost is aged and ready. But every year thereafter at the same time, you have a finished batch that's coming up uh, and so it's ideal to plan this so that it's time to be ready for your spring planting, whenever that is. So the trade-off here is much more time until you have finished compost in exchange for much less labor. Um, the work that you see me doing right now, including the turning of the compost, is the most labor that you're going to do at any point in this process and that only happens once a year um, the rest of like adding to the pile as you'll see is really simple and takes maybe like five to seven minutes to put a new addition on the pile and that that's a big trade-off for me a big benefit in that I don't have to be spending a bunch of time managing this pile it kind of does its thing it just takes much longer when you do it this way the other thing to note here is that turning the pile after that first year is not even necessary. I simply do it to make sure that any tight clumps in the pile are broken up and so I can redistribute all the material in the pile to make sure that I have a better breakdown process. But it's not necessary to turn the pile at all. And so really, if you choose to go that route, the only work that you're doing is just carrying buckets out to the pile and dumping them on and covering it with dry material. And that's that. Also, a little about the bins themselves. Um, you can see it's just made of wood and what's harder to see is that they are all covered in hardware cloth, half inch hardware cloth. 
Uh, this helps to keep out any animals from digging through the pile. And then I also have the gates on the front because we have dogs and I really just don't need my dogs digging through my own shit. Uh, so the gates serve to keep them out of the piles. If you don't have dogs or anything, the gates aren't even strictly necessary. You could just have the pile out in the open. But it is a good idea to have it secured with the hardware cloth uh, to keep any any wild animals from digging in the pile. And the other thing that I need to do with these bins is still put on a hardware cloth lid on top uh, to prevent birds or anything from getting in. But at this point, I've covered the pile, so let's go around back and I'll explain how the toilet works. So this is how our compost toilet works. Uh, I built a plywood box for it and above it I have just a quick and dirty little cabinet. Holds toilet paper so everything's accessible. Um, on one side we have a compartment <coughs> that holds all of our wood shavings. And then this is what it looks like on any given day. Um, it's just wood shavings and that's it. So inside this, I, I cut a circle out that fits the bucket pretty accurately. Um, that cuts down on any sort of urine spillage, uh, which keeps everything much, much cleaner. And then this lifts up, and the bucket just sits here inside this box. And I put a ring in the bottom. It's just a, a cut out of plywood screwed into the bottom, and that serves to locate the bucket accurately so that you're not fishing around with the bucket and trying to line everything up when it comes time to change the bucket out. And so I will show you guys the process of how I uh, empty the buckets and add to the compost pile. So let's grab this and go for a walk. So I have two buckets here. The bucket on the left is from the toilet. On the right is all of our food scraps from the kitchen. Uh, so I've timed this because the buckets fill up at roughly the same rate um, and the reason for doing them both at the same time is one of practicality and it's just simply easier to carry a heavy thing in each hand rather than being unbalanced. So I empty the toilet bucket first every time and then I cover it with the food waste from the kitchen and that also helps to prevent odors from coming out of the pile. Uh, level it out a little bit. Uh, you could also see at the very beginning I dug a little depression in the pile um, and you want to dig that depression in a slightly different location each time just to kind of spread out all of your additions. Um, after you empty the buckets out of the waste rinse them out with water but you want to keep the I use a hose I keep the water in the bucket so that I'm not splashing any of our, especially our bathroom waste around the yard. Um, and it's also worth noting that when you pour this, you don't just slosh it on. You want to kind of be a little careful with it because it's no fun getting splashed with this stuff. Um, after you have the waste on the pile, the water in, uh, then you add your cover material and that's it. Uh, that's, that's the entire process. Uh, as far as the water goes, I fill each bucket up with maybe three to four gallons of water and that's all the water that gets used for a five-day period for the toilet as opposed to using a flush toilet where you would easily, one person would easily use that amount of water in a single day. So that's it. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and thanks so much for watching.